Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. In the shadows of the skyline of Boston off in the distance. And we're ready to rock. Luca Lombardo kicks it away. Fair catch from Washington. All right, let's take a look at today's impact players brought to you by Walmart Plus. Walmart Plus members save on free delivery, plus gas, plus so much more. Join today. Malik Washington is electric when he gets his hands on the ball. Just 5'8", 194, but big time with the playmaking ability. It'll be a lot of Kobe pace in that backfield, but of course Mike Hollins, the other highlighted UVA offensive player, of course, inspiring every single day to this program, players and coaches alike. Kobe Pace so far the leading rusher for this Virginia team. That is Pace. Got five yards. Continue with today's impact players. Brought to you by Walmart Plus, BC on deep. Always good corner play here at BC, and that's the same with Elijah Jones, one of the most experienced players on this team and experienced. That's the captain right in the middle, Vinny De Palma, the Mike linebacker. Second and five from Musket. Up to the 35-yard line, Malachi Fields has the catch, and that is good enough for first down yardage as Jones made the tackle for BC. Malachi Fields is the big target. Malik Washington, the smaller of the two by a, a big chunk, but both of them really big playmakers. And Tony Musket taking advantage, slinging it around on this opening drive. 23 catches on the season now for Fields. Second most behind Malik Washington. He's got 28 to start the afternoon. Musket out of the pocket. Veers to his right and dives for the 45-yard line. About a yard short of the line to gain. De Palma made the tackle. They got nine. Well, one thing you saw in the NC State near upset win was Calandria tucking the ball and going. A couple good moves in the open space, open field against Peyton Wilson, a great linebacker. You see right here early in this game that Tony Musket, when he needs to, he can tuck it and run as well. Almost first down yardage right here. Second and short for Virginia. Last Friday, a close call against NC State. 24-21. Wolfpack had a field goal in the last play of the game. Kobe Pace gets four on the rush, and that'll move the sticks. Yeah, he got four, but he wanted about 50, didn't he? He was upset. He fell coming out of that cut. Still a first down. Nice balance here on the opening drive. Des Kitchens, the offensive coordinator. Swing. Musket. The receiver adjusted to the football but could not hang on. It was Fields, defended by Elijah Jones, a graduate student from New York City. Excellent coverage here by Jones. Gets his hands on him. They did a great job with those big FSU receivers and a lot of that through the press coverage and Elijah Jones can't do a better job covering right there but that shows you how difficult right there that back shoulder throw can be. Falls to the ground though nonetheless. Hand off up the middle of the pace. He'll make it to the BC 47 in a short game. Cam Horsley on the tackle after four yards on the play for Pace. Tony Musket, 6'2", 206, and a senior. Springfield, Virginia, and the transfer from Monmouth. 14-9 is the starter at Monmouth. Thirty-six percent of the season, as you saw in third down, that is thirteenth in the ACC. Muskets pass complete at the thirty, taken in by Fields. Third down, you better find the big man number eight, and that's exactly what Musket does. He has protection. The defensive back slips. It wouldn't have mattered though. First down. Nineteen yards previous play. Musket steps up and throws. That's complete inside the ten and bashing his way. Near the five, Malik Washington. And what an addition he has been to this Virginia team, James. 
Yeah, picking up the pace and hitting them with the tempo. Virginia substitutes here, so Boston College will get a chance. But this is more of the same when it comes to the start for Boston College that you saw last weekend against Louisville. Louisville just on fire in the first half, and BC had no answers. Need to try to get a stop right here and hold him to a field goal try, but it's first and goal now. Handoff. Hollins. Tries to fight his way down to the five yard line. Going inside of 11 minutes now in the first quarter. First possession of the game. As Boston College elected to defer after winning the toss. And so Tony Elliott's team trying to march down the field. Fala had the previous tackle on Hollins. And here we go with second and goal. That nose of the football right on the five for Virginia. Musket still has it, gets rid of it. This is Hollins looking for the corner of the end zone. And Hollins takes it into the end zone for the touchdown for Virginia. Nice play call here by Des Kitchings, the offensive coordinator for Tony Elliott. An excellent execution by a guy who you might think is a little bit rusty after missing all that time, but that's not the case. Got the fake on the jet sweep, and with pressure in his face, he was able to get it off just in time right out on the fingertips for Hollins. Hollins with his first receiving touchdown of the season after Betridge adds the extra point. Well, Mr. Inspiration, what a wonderful sight to see right there. Number seven, giving him seven. Drive as Tony Musket has his first TD pass of the season. And Des Kitchens pushing the right buttons, Bates. Ten plays, five rush, five pass in that first drive. Well, that's what the majority of college football teams would like is balance in that offense. And right down the middle. Looking crisp, getting off that bus and coming in to Chestnut Hill, the Hoos. Matt Ganyard kicks it away for Virginia. This will be O'Keefe from inside the five. He's got the 20, shakes his way past the 25. And they'll mark him close to the 27 or eight. Let's take a look at today's impact players brought to you by Walmart Plus, Walmart Plus members. Save on free delivery plus gas plus so much more. Join today. Well, Lewis Bond. Over on this side of the ball, a lot like some of those speedsters they've got for Virginia. He's very dangerous. And gosh, it's good to see Christian Mahogany back out there. It's good to see a healthy offensive line here for Boston College. I guess that is unless you're on that front four of Virginia. Big boys up front. After the 25-yard return, BC goes to the ground for the first play in Garwo. And now today's impact players brought to you by Walmart, Walmart Plus with Virginia on defense. Well, you've got Trey Walker, the cornerback is outstanding. A young guy out of Denver, North Carolina, and we all know about James Jackson, the third-year player, big-time playmaker there in the middle, moving over to Will Linebacker so Cam Robinson can get some playing time, helping him out. Castellanos tosses it out. This is Broom, and Virginia ready for it. That looked like James Jackson, number seven, right in the middle, and there is no gain as he wrestled the ball carrier to the turf. Yeah, right on cue. Player to watch. Watch him right now. A little bit of a, a slam, making sure they felt it. And not exactly how Jeff Halfley and these Eagles wanted to start things off here today. That's, we spent a lot of time talking with these coaches of Boston College yesterday about the need for some playmakers to make some plays early. BC ninth in the conference on third down. Castellano throws and throws up near the 45. And take it in. Ryan O'Keefe. And it's enough for an Eagles first down. And that right on cue as well. Castellanos, when he gets rolling, buys himself some time and some time for guys like O'Keefe to get open. O'Keefe, a guy who we saw, received that kickoff here to start this drive. And Halfley told us, hey, we've got to get things going on the kickoff return, and he's just the guy to do that. The graduate student, Ryan O'Keefe, there helping him first down. 
205 career receptions now for O'Keefe. Castellanos going deep, and it's too far for everybody. Ryan O'Keefe, who is now sixth among active players in the Football Bowl subdivision in receptions, could not run it down. Dre Walker was back there for Virginia. You know, wasn't it interesting to hear how the whole Castellanos thing went down, Tom, talking with those coaches? It, we, we saw Emmett Moorhead, and, and he's no slouch. Played some good ball at the end of last year. We haven't had him a couple times, so they felt like they needed a backup. Castellanos was available. He came up but didn't go through spring ball. Castellanos hangs on to this one. Dragging the tackler, Jonas Sanker, with him. There is no game. You know, this this is a great job by Sanker, a guy who leads the team, coming in with 34 tackles. It, by not throwing down Castellanos. Watch, he's going to grab the back of the shoulder pads. Your first instinct is to just throw him down using that, that, that right hand on the shoulder pads, but that's a horse collar. So a great job not to draw the penalty flag, knocks down a good open field runner and forces a third and long again. From the 45 for the Eagles. Castellanos, bit of time, slings it down the sideline. Receiver O'Keefe appeared to cut it off short. Sanker was back there, and that brings up fourth down for Boston College on the incompletion. Castellanos, James, completed close to 60% of his passes so far this season, but could not convert on third down looking for O'Keefe. DiLoretto to punt. Harrison. Fair catch just inside the Virginia 20. 7.40 to go in the first quarter. Cavaliers with a 7-0 lead on the seat. Massachusetts, Tony Musket took them down the field on their first possession, Bates. Yeah, he did. A little run, little pass. Five and five to be exact. Nice balance and a nice start after his first start since being injured against Tennessee. On point with a couple very nice targets. There you see capping off that opening drive with the touchdown pass to Mike Collins. And here comes drive number two. They're set up in the pistol. Pace. Not a whole lot up near the 20 for Pace. Tate on the tackle for Boston College. There you see the numbers here early for Tony Musket. You know, and it was it was a battle between Calandria and Musket throughout the spring on into two a days. And back and forth, but Musket won the job. That's why he's once again healthy and once again the starter here today on the road. It was Calandria through the late TD pass, the tie. The game with NC State a week ago, they got the two-point conversion after a penalty and had a chance as NC State drove it down the field and made a field goal. Braden Narvison, 33 yards in the last play of regulation to defeat Virginia, and now it's third down. Nice place there, uh, play there by George Rooks. Ain't no thing is halfway, Rooks. He was full speed there to drop him in an inspired. Downs one and two for this BC defense. Let's see what they got on third down and long here. 29 yard line. The line to gain. On third and seven. That pocket collapses on Tony Musket. The Eagles have a meeting at the quarterback as Oraku leading the way for Boston College. There you go, a little bit of pressure on number 11. Nowhere for him to escape this time. Doing a great job staying in those rush lanes as a rock you like a hurricane. Donovan, the captain on that defense, preseason all ACC after that huge year last year. Fourth in the ACC in sacks. That was a loss of six on the sack. Lewis Bond camps under it. Bond takes off, he got bumped, still made the catch and takes it inside the Virginia 40. So the flag came out as there was contact on Bond. Yeah, great job focusing 
by Bond, even as he's getting hit is his legs. You you know, you can only imagine how vulnerable you must feel when you've got bodies flying around near your ankles and knees. Personal foul, kick catch interference, kicking team. That penalty's declined. Results of the play. First down. Timeout. Jeff Heiser, our referee with the official word. Bond takes it into Virginia Territory. Might be a few people around here watching that game tomorrow. Today they're watching Boston College in Virginia on the CW. Castellanos incomplete near the 40-yard line. Takis couldn't hang on to it. You know, that momentum, they could not get control of it against Louisville. It was a Louisville team last weekend that scored on all six of their first half possessions. Good stop by the BC defense to get a three and out after letting a touchdown go on the opening drive. The offense has to complement now and move the ball. Garwo cut down in the backfield. Falmui makes the tackle, loss of two for BC. Great job by Falmui. He's going down and gives everything he has just to get out there and get a piece. And he knocks down Big Garwo. So here's a third down and 12, and it's interesting here in plus position for Hapley especially. Remember, he'll go for it very aggressive on fourth down, so not necessarily needing that 28-yard line right now. Out to the edge. Caught by Bond. Ridden out of bounds inside the 35. A flag came out at the end of the play on the tackle of Bond. Sanker was there to stop Bond. This may change things here as you see Jeff Halfley talking it over. Jeff Heiser is our referee. Illegal block in the back. Offense number 66. Penalties decline. Results of the play. Fourth out. There's a look at it right there, just right out in the open, too. And offensive lineman, was it Drew Kendall? Drew Kendall, the center. Good hustle getting out there, but not quite enough and just reaching out. And so they'll keep it right there and play this fourth down. So Virginia declines it now fourth and six, and nobody goes for it on fourth down more than Boston College. This is the 14th time this season. Going for it on fourth down. Castellanos rolling to his bench, throws it, and near the 20, Virginia picks it off. Trey Walker with the interception on fourth down of Castellanos. Going on the field is an interception by the defense. First down, Virginia. Well, here's an explosive cornerback, a young guy. His first season here with Virginia. And he's great when the ball's in the air. He doesn't have to battle anyone out necessarily for this one here. Goes up and high points it. And, you know, not, not too terrible, the, the play, if you're a Boston College fan, because, you know, how many times you see a punter punt it on into the end zone and it comes back out to this spot. Give yourself a chance. But still, excellent play to turn it over. And Virginia looking good in all phases. After their second interception of the season for the Cavaliers, they give it to Kobe Pace. Got two yards for the senior from Cedartown, Georgia. Walker with the interception. Micah Gaffney has the other one this season for Virginia. Cavaliers scored on their opening drive. Took it 75 yards on 10 plays. For Muskets first TD pass in a Virginia uniform. Quick look. To the 30 and beyond, Malik Washington. And that is a first down for Virginia to Washington. Averages over 16 yards per catch for Washington. Now they go on the edge, back to him. Easy. Takes Easy. a few Eagles up to the 42. That's awfully close to a first down as well, James. It and is. it is. It could have been, should have been about a three-yard gain, proper angles, or maybe not when it comes to Malik Washington. So quick putting that foot in the ground and getting outside. Musket stumbles. It's all you, Will. It's all you. Good job here by the BC defense to stretch it out. 
Amari Jackson is 24 gems in maroon and gold. So Virginia dominating the yardage battle so far. 75 of those yards on their opening drive for a score. And a 7 0 lead with just over two and a half minutes to go in our first quarter from Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Congested area for pace, only got one as Oraku, the sophomore from Williamstown, New Jersey, on the stop. And that'll bring up third and long for Virginia from its own 45. Donovan Ezeraku mentioned he finished fourth in the ACC in sacks last year. He had eight, 14 and a half tackles for loss like that one right there. There's a big third down and eight. See if this Eagle D can get off the field again. They're showing blitz. Whistles stop the play. Flags come out as well. Prior to snap, ball starts. Offense, number 50, five-yard penalty, remains third down. Mazar Abdul-Rahim, the defensive coordinator of Boston College, great sit down with him yesterday. He looked to have him coming there on third down and eight. Let's see what he's got for him on third down and 13 now. Last time out, they had all kinds of pressure on Musket on a third and long, able to force a punt. There's three guys on the line right now, walked up. Third and 13 from Musket. Those edges will bend. Steps up and throws. And Short hops it to Washington at the 40. It'll be fourth down now for Virginia. Well, he had his guy, had to buy a little bit of time to get outside, but unable to come back across his body and connect. So after giving up Seven on the opening drive. The Eagle defense has stiffened here as of late. Daniel Sparks to punt. Bond gets away from it, hits inside the five, and goes into the end zone. It's a whole nother show, but enjoy that on the CW. So Boston College will take over from its own 20. They struggled on the ground, yet to gain a yard on four rushing plays so far. Castellanos from the shotgun. Garwals puts him on the positive side of things, short of the 25 with three yards for Garwal, who a couple of years ago, James Pat Garwal was a thousand yard rusher for this BC program. Yeah, they, they've had some great backs come through here. Garwo just one of them. Robicho unable to go today. The junior out of Columbus, Georgia, has had a pretty good year. He's out with a foot injury, so they'll miss him. Still have Broom and Barfield behind Garwo. Castellanos put a little touch on that one to O'Keefe as he goes out of bounds. Right near the 30. Well, we showed you this off the top. You get that, that run, you get that defense thinking about that run a little bit. It opens up so many things because you've got some fast linebackers that are flying out of there trying to go make the big play, and it's run first when you're a linebacker. And then you slip out Ryan O'Keefe, guys like him and Lewis Bond. And Castellanos put him out on the edge where he can wheel and deal. Quick release. Easy. Bond. Once again, taken out of bounds. Tavon Kyle, the senior on the tackle. Two yards on that play. The ball at the 32 of BC on what might just be the last play of the first quarter. So Jeff Hafley and the Eagles will have to do just that. It was a slow start last week. Oh, shit. Up the middle, second level for Castellanos. The leading rusher for BC coming into this afternoon, and he takes it out past the 45, first down yardage. Yeah, that'll, that'll give you some speed. Castellanos on a third down and 15 from his old goal line, just about, against FSU. James, you see the end of that play. Yeah, I saw it yeah. hit the ground, and Trapillo's going to do a great job of hustling down and falling on it. But 
so dangerous, Castellanos, when he cuffs that ball and goes. So a good break, break for the Eagles. This one over the middle and intercepted. Second pick of the game for Virginia. There are penalty markers on the play. See if that play will stand on the interception for the Cavaliers. Not really sure who that ball was intended for. So if it stands, Ahern has the interception for Virginia. They've already got one in the game. There's Ahern does a good job of reading those eyes of Castellanos. And he's he's trying to get there it to no the foul deep foul crosser, foul. which results in the play as interception, first down. I couldn't quite hear that call. But Ahern slip hands, slap hands. Well, tackling fuel, that linebacker doing a great job of just watching those eyes of number one. And he was looking for Griffin on that crossing route. But even with that, he was he was well behind him. So put the ball on the ground on the carry on the play before, fortunate enough to get it back. That's not the case right here. Ball right back into the hands of the musket man, Tony Musket. James, the Virginia offense. Yeah, James, I'm being told the penalty marker was picked up. So the 10 yard return by Ahern after the interception. Muskets pass gets batted down. Oh, Paula getting those mitts up there. A nice job. That's that's why you use those hands and you separate those bodies of the big offensive linemen from you. Pass rushing. Not just to get the hands off of you and, and to get to that quarterback, but also so you can separate and you're able to go up. When you're locked chest to chest, you're unable to do that. Nice mirror technique by the defensive end. Neto Akpala making the play on first down. And now Musket absorbs some contact as he goes inside the 30. Rugged run from number 11, Tony Musket. Ran into John Pupil. Yeah, this this shows a lot right here for a guy who's been banged up the AC joint that left shoulder and quick on the snap there for this third and short. It's showing you not only the toughness for Tony hey, Elliott's Coach, quarterback. Man, offense, this number 55, line up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty. So that'll make it third and six after the penalty. Brian Stevens is the center. One for three on third down in the first half. For the Cavaliers. And offensive coordinator Des Kitt. Students, fans of all ages, enjoying ACC football on the CW. Tom Wormy, James Bates, Tepper the Turners on the sidelines. She looked like Annie, didn't she? The sun isn't coming out today, Bates, but Come it's on. still it's still a nice afternoon. Big third down here. Musket pressured. Got rid of it. Catch made by Fields inside the 25. Trying to work his way to the 20. Either way, it's going to be first down yardage for Virginia. What a grab by Fields over the middle and a first down Cavaliers. A couple big time plays by Tony Musket. No rust at all. He's fallen backwards. He knows he's going to take a shot and does a fantastic job of leading Fields. And big Malachi Fields at 6'4", 220, tucking it and crossing that first down marker. Fresh set of downs inside the 20. 14 yards, previous play into the red zone. The cut made by Pace. And he dives down to the 18-yard line, only a yard. Bates, the teams haven't met since 2020. That was a win for Virginia at home, 43-32. Their first win in the series, and they've never won here in Chestnut Hill. Virginia 0-3.
as the visiting team at Alumni Stadium. Uh, Tony Elliott's squad right now 0 and 4 on the season. Trying to find a way to scrap and get win number one, but it won't be easy. Boston College, a team that feels like they got to win this football game as well. Second and nine for Musket. Looking right all the way. This is down to the goal line. Into the end zone. And a touchdown. Malik Washington for the Cavaliers. Well, Tony Musket came loaded, brought the gunpowder for this game for that Musket, didn't he? My goodness, what a start for Musket and these Virginia Cavaliers. Betridge for the extra point. Musket, two TD passes in the first half for Virginia. Showing you why he won this starting job and spring it in the summer, slinging it, running it, scoring touchdowns are up by two scores right now. Model before, with Virginia jumping out to 14 nothing leads, it happened against Maryland. They didn't score again though. Well, we've also seen BC fight back in a lot of these games. They were down 31-10 in the second half. One of the best teams in college ball, FSU. So a lot of football to be played here, that's for sure. O'Keefe on the return. Pile up at the 15. Chad Michael Murray from One Tree Hill fame oh. on the CW. And he's back. <laughs> Not to be confused with Chaz Michael Michaels. Boston College. Trying to rumble up the middle. That is a rude tackle from Chico Bennett on Alex Broom. Broom did get four yards on the rush, and he heads to the BC sideline. Look at Chico Bennett, the former Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket. Like Tabitha Turner. She played her college ball for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Chico Bennett's old team playing Bowling Green after the big win over Wake last week, and they'll have the Miami Hurricanes next weekend. Castellanos try to improvise up to the 20, maybe just beyond the 20. Cam Robinson on the tackle. Castellanos got two. You know, this Virginia defensive line, James, missing a key part in Cam Butler. He's out with a shoulder and chest injury from the defensive end position, although the Cavaliers making up for his loss quite nicely so far this afternoon. Yeah, it was a shoulder and pec injury for Butler. Hopefully he gets healthy soon. The six-year player from Kentucky. Castellanos fires a strike beyond the 25-yard line to Lewis Bond. Malcolm Green had to tackle five yards is enough to grease the chains and move them for the Eagles. Hey, they'll take it any way they can get it. That's that's big right here for this offense for Castellanos. A couple interceptions already here in this first half. Got to get back into a little bit of a rhythm for this offense. Castellanos, oh, daylight up the middle. Just short of the 45, Cohen King had to make the tackle, barreling his way to a big chunk run for BC. Yeah, and George Takis, the graduate student from Naples, Florida, transfer from Notre Dame, blocking right down the field for him. Castellanos got 18 yards on the run. Now he has to freelance and step out of bounds, maybe right near the 45. Chico Bennett got in his way. Watch the umpire here, right in the middle of the field. Umpire today is Sean Garrity. Oh. Did you watch him? I, I was watching. Okay. Everybody should be watching. Yeah. There he is. It's ACC football on the CW. <laughs> What's not to like? Both of these teams fighting hard for their first Conference victory. Jeff Heiser. Ball start. Offense number 60. Five yard penalty. Second down. This has been a big time issue. Penalties overall, but especially these false start.
penalties and, and Jeff Halfley talking to him. Castellanos comes from a system at UCF where it's it's the silent snap, silent count, slapping the hands, taking that football. And here, you know, it's a little bit different for Castellanos. He's huddling, breaking the huddle, barking out these signals, and the cadence has thrown off this offensive line a lot. Pass play gets blown up to Ryan O'Keefe. Micah Gaffney on the tackle for Virginia. John Radzinski, the defensive coordinator for Virginia. You know, he's, he's had some, some sound, just physical defense, especially up front. They, they're always going to play smart football and sound football, and they're playing with, with some good burst and some good speed showing you right there. Gaffney, a nice play to force a third down and 15. Castellanos. At the 40 and incomplete. Castellanos has to be helped up by his teammates. O'Keefe was the closest BC receiver and now fourth down for Boston College. That ball, fortunately for Halfley and the Eagles, hitting that turf and chance to come out here and punt this one away as opposed to the third interception of the day because it's well underthrown. Castellanos now just 6 of 12 through the air. DiLoretto punts it to Harrison. He'll watch it bounce. Take an eagle roll in the neighborhood of the 21 yard line. And that's where they will down it. So Virginia and Tony Musket. So is Tony Musket for this offense. He's that safety playing over knowing he's got no help over here from that defense. So it's going to be man. And he's looking for the little big man, Malik Washington. It's Jalen Cheek on the coverage. A couple steps behind because that's a, a tough draw to cover in space like that. And especially when Musket is firing like that right on the money. Nice, easy pitch and catch to make it 14 to nothing. Musket again looking to throw. On the run. Near the 35 and caught Malik Washington. Musket now 9 of 12 through the air. He's beyond 100 yards passing. Washington now with his fifth catch of the game. 15 yards on that play on the first down. Collins. Near the 50 and spun down for Hollins. First downs on successive plays for Virginia. Mike Hollins, who has a rushing TD in this game. 13 yards. Correction, caught a pass from Musket. That was in the first quarter. Five-yard TD pass. His first receiving TD of the season. He has two rushing TDs as well. Oh, shit. Musket stumbles down near the 40. That's three plays in a row. If this one's another first down, and it is. Ten yards on the run for Musket. Got a pass, a run by Hollins, and then Musket tucking it and going. Musket. Flag came out as he got pushed out of bounds. Nigel Tate sent Musket out. Holding offense, number 71. Ten-yard penalty, first down. There it was, Ghana Nana, the right tackle from Seguin High School, Arlington, Texas. So Nana flagged for the infraction, and the ball moves back to midfield. Just on the Virginia side of the 50. Once again, whistles and flags. Before the snap, ball start, offense, number 51. Five-yard penalty, first down. 51 is Ty Furnish. Well, looks like about the only thing that can stop Virginia on this drive. And so far, a couple of penalty flags. Big chunks in the first few snaps, but going the wrong way, courtesy of the flags. And, you know, that's been... The case for Boston College throughout most of this year, they'll take it. 177 total yards of offense for Virginia so far. They will not add to that total. 
Paris Jones couldn't find it from Musket. Pupil on the coverage. That first down marker is all the way down for Tony Elliott. Down at the BC 30. Second and 25. Nine of 13 for Musket. First two TD passes of the season for him after the injury in week one of the non-throwing shoulder from Musket that kept him out for the last three games. Jones just stepping to the BC side of the 50 on a six yard gain for Paris Jones. 60 year grad student from Alexandria, Virginia. George Rooks had to stop for BC. And a nice job by Rooks to get a piece of him. Because that ball was gone for a whole lot more had he not. Third down and 19 now. Yeah, easy. Muskets pass complete to Hollins. Puts the shoulder down well short of the marker. He's near the 40, needed to get near the 30 of Boston College. Cam Arnold. There for BC. Hala as well. Be careful here. BC. Let's see if they come out. Even though it's, it's fourth down and 12. You, you got a lot of a lot of meat on that bone to get a first down. But this situation, you got to be careful when you got that defense, that team it seems like on their heels. Midfield plus territory for a fake. Sparks to punch. He will send it skyward. Bond, the deep man, gets out of dodge, and that one will bounce into the end zone. And once that football breaks the plane of the goal line, college football, that is a touchback. He's of college football. Here in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, right now the fans yet to celebrate as Virginia has scored passing touchdowns in both the first and here in the second quarter as well from Tony Musket. Inside of five minutes to go in the second quarter, Takis cut down near the 20 yard line. Cohen King made the tackle, just a yard for Takis. First year of football for Boston College, James, 1893. Virginia started playing in 1888. And here we are in 2023. Castellanos trying to find a blocker. And Virginia was ready for it. Well, Ahern makes the tackle, loss of three. Great job by Ahern. Look at him, take on the block, but not get eaten up by it. Get rid of it. Give him a little hit and shuck him. Keep that outside pad free. Excellent technique by the fifth year player out of Burke, Virginia. An interception in this quarter for Ahern. Third and long. Easy. Castellanos trying to thread it in there. And a couple of different players wearing different uniforms had a chance to make the catch incomplete. Takis, the intended receiver for BC and back to the sideline. Hardy back there defensively. Well, plays like the last one by Ahern, getting them behind schedule and trying to just force the football down the field, even after two interceptions by this defense. And lucky, that's not three right there. You're right, Tom. It went through one set of hands and then another of the Cavaliers. Now, Lewis Bond had a chance at it for BC. This will bounce. This is an eagle roll, not a lobster roll, an eagle roll inside the 35 yard line on the punt by DiLoretto. For Di Loretto. Well, you saw the big HUD to Emmett Moorhead, who everybody in this program thought was going to be the starter here this year. Even with Castellanos on campus. Musket looks one way, goes the other, and BC's ready for it. So Pace made the catch, but you can see that post tackle celebration, just a yard on the play. Johnson, a fantastic job just eating it up. You know, those guys out in, in space, you can get them before they turn those shoulders and get really dangerous going north and south. 
advantage defense. Johnson doing a good job with that right there. Second and nine. Try the other side with pace. He gets past the 35 yard line, wrapped up around the ankles. Vinny De Palma, the grad student from Wayne, New Jersey. 5'11, 232, four yards on the play for Virginia. And here's a good example. Pace gets the ball with his shoulders square, able to put a foot in the ground and get a few extra yards. Good job recovering there by De Palma, though, to force this third down. Harry Potter over there in the stands. Two of five on third down for Virginia. Musket from a cluttered pocket. He'll be dragged to the turf by Boston College in the sack. Rooks and Johnson pull down Musket. Brings up fourth down for Virginia. Cavaliers lose eight on the play. And the BC defense rises to the occasion on third down. <laughs> Beating up on their teammates right there. He looks for good reason, brought a lot of juice in the first half. Uh-oh, uh-oh. That's Bond who meets it at the 29. Makes it up to the 35-yard line after the punt by Sparks. Aiden Ryan made the tackle on special teams for Virginia. There was some time lost there, James. Maybe Coach Halfley thinking about a timeout after that sack. Yeah, but three timeouts, 132. And that's plenty of time to work. They just need a couple big plays to ignite. Defensively, they've had it. Johnson and Rooks combining right there. The nice pressure. Rooks has been in there a few times. A transfer from Michigan. They need TC, Thomas Castellanos. To try to break one here. Great job by Rodzinski's defense to keep him bottled up, put the pressure on. Castellanos maneuvering, looking. Slammed on the brakes momentarily and then stepped out of bounds. All that for a game that matches jersey number. Well, How about if you're Thomas Castellano well, Spades? Well, watch, watch Fal Falmui right here. 94. Here he is. Watch him, watch him adjust his angle. It's good defensive play. He knows he's not as fast as him. How many times you see a guy go flat? The quarterback runs right by him. He adjusts him, runs him out of bounds. Fantastic hustle. He completed the 45-yard line and a penalty marker. O'Keefe, the receiver, Tavon Kyle defending. And a marker comes out. Pass interference, defense, number 23, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Yeah, they don't, they don't mind that. Again, they'll, they'll take those first downs any way they can get them, and I think it's a good call. He's going to run by O'Keefe, and, and, and he grabs a hold of him to make sure he doesn't have a chance to get back at it. So Kyle just living to play another down. For Tony Elliott. Castellanos, who in his second career start against Florida State, threw for over 300 yards and ran for 95 yards. He's off and running again, trying to elude the Cavaliers, and he gets ridden out of bounds. Jonas Sanker redirecting Castellanos. Yeah. Sanker, so, he, he's so good from that safety spot. And again, Everybody in a white jersey on that defensive side of the ball. Castellanos is as dangerous as they come. We saw it against FSU. How many times did he make them miss? But those vice angles are crisp. They're in the right rushing lanes. Quick look. Down near the 40. Little stiff arm as he goes out of bounds for Joseph Griffin. On Cohen King, the defender for Virginia. Nine yards on that play for BC. Boston College really needs to go into this halftime locker room with some points. Two for six on third down. This is third and short. Castellanos got it away and it's caught. Lewis Bond. Bond inside the 15. Gets away and then fights his way down inside the 10. Lewis Bond for Boston College. First and goal for the Eagles. Bates, how about 34 yards on the play? How about it? How about where it starts? Boom, the lick on Castellanos. And then is it Lewis Bond or James Bond getting out of trouble again and again and again, losing the shoe? Flag comes out of the play into the end zone. 
So BC with its first trip to the red zone this afternoon, late here in the second Pass quarter. Pass interference, defense number eight. The penalty took place in the end zone. The ball be placed at the two yard line. First down. It's Malcolm Green whistled for the infraction. Just working on Griffin, who's a big body at 6'3", 200. So a fresh set of downs again, plenty of time with those three timeouts. BC just 12th in the conference in the red zone, but the ball's at the two-yard line. Inside of a minute to go, right at the middle, slamming into the end zone for the Eagles, and it's Pat Garwo. up front led by the captain mahogany you got kendall hergel taylor trapillo that's a little bit more like it these bc eagle fans say connor for the extra point after garwo picks up his first rushing touchdown of the season from two yards away for the eagles and they go 65 yards in 45 seconds to score ACC football on the CW returns next Saturday as the thundering herd of Marshall charge into Raleigh to face a hungry Wolfpack team ready to defend their home turf. Tony Gibson and Dave Doran's football team will be back ready to go. As they've got a pretty good one coming in non-conference. We'll see if Marshall can go in there undefeated as well at 4-0. BC next Saturday is at Army at noon. Washington. Big collision near the 20. Owen McGowan colliding with Washington on the 17-yard kick return for Virginia. Just like that, Bates, with the Garwo TD, we got a football game, 14-7 late in the second. You took the just like that right out of my mouth, Wormy, because, hey, look at this first half. It's no secret. Virginia has owned this first half offensively, defensively. Boston College unable to get anything going, but just like that, Jeff Hathley and company right now hold the momentum. 41 seconds, three timeouts, and you've got a guy with a big arm back there Keep them in front of you. Keep Virginia in front of you if you're this defense. Don't let, let them grab back any of that momentum. Marching down the football field here with 41 seconds left. 12 of 16, 132 yards, and a couple of TD passes for Musket. Appeared to be deflected and then grabbed by Malachi Fields. How about that concentration? Yeah, excellent job. And, and Jackson, there you see at the line, that's one thing those big guys have a tough time doing is, is getting off that jam, but he does a good job there. Musket got it away and incomplete, short of the intended receiver, Paris Jones, after they got 11 on the catch by Fields. 22 seconds to go. Virginia's been penalized in this first half. Six penalties for 44 yards, and it helped out on that previous BC drive when Garwell capped it off with the two-yard rushing TD to get the Eagles on the board. Pressure on Musket. Eludes it and throws. Completed for 45. Jaden Gibson into BC territory. And now inside of two minutes second, to go in the second and fourth out. quarter. Virginia. Clock would stop after the first seconds. down. Virginia will take a timeout and regroup with the ball right at the 46 of Boston College after the previous play went for 23 yards to Jaden Gibson. So very late in the second quarter, just 12 seconds to go, Tony Elliott calling a timeout. He's going to try to make the most of these last few seconds, and why not? He's seen his team create leads and be unable to keep them as they seek their first win of the season. Must it with a couple of TD passes in this first half. Had a short TD pass to Hollins and also Malik Washington, 18 yards for a score for Virginia. 
Again, just 12 seconds to go in the half. Musket pass. Washington inside the 35. Mark him near the 33 or 4. And immediately Virginia Third, takes another timeout. timeout. 13 Virginia. yards 30 seconds. on that pass to Musket. So now just eight seconds to go. And Tony Elliott trying to figure out a play here. And leading by seven to BC, which just scored on its last possession. Coach Elliott taking the timeout. Well, and Jim Davies, sports information director at the University of Virginia, came in pre-game and said, hey, by the way, we've got a guy that can hit a 57-yard field goal. Um, over here, Dan Lover don't have my roster, but they, they've got a guy with, with some leg that can do it. So smart use of these timeouts, having the three remaining. Can't take them to the locker room. So Virginia has taken both of its timeouts late here in this quarter. So just eight seconds to go. Maybe you've got enough for a couple plays. We'll see. Musket trying to avoid the pressure just throws it. There is no receiver in the vicinity. Just looked at his left and got rid of it. Well, they, yeah, they need to put a flag. There it goes. There it goes. Very late. But yeah, he's he's inside the tackle box. It, there's nobody around. This is an easy one right here. So, and a nice job to keep this pressure on by these defensive linemen. And Ganyard was the name I was looking for, who handles the kickoff duties. But intentional now, Browning, offense number 11. Lost it down by rule of 10 seconds. Applies. So they'll take it in. Did they not have the last? Did they? Well, if there's a 10 second runoff applied here, that should end the half. I, I guess they, I, I'm sorry. I thought they started this drive with three. They only had two times. They had two. So they used them both. They, they did. They could use a timeout now if they had one, which they don't right here. But of course, you could use that to kill that that 10 second runoff, which won't be the case. Correction. There was a helmet that came off during the play. By rule, the 10 second runoff does not apply. The clock will start on the ready with three seconds. So because I guess what they're saying, okay. So since the helmet came off, the play immediately stops. You have to stop the play for safety reasons. If a helmet comes off and the play stops. I guess the whole point is that there's still three seconds well, left on the game clock. Yeah. So therefore. So the ball's been moved that back to about the 39 of BC. You know, which would be like a 58 yard field goal, Jens, which they're not going to try to attempt. Although they'll go with a four receiver set on what should be the final play of this quarter. The ball was not. The ball was not marked ready for play. Timeout. Boston College. 30 seconds. Bates, I need a timeout to figure out what's going on. <laughs> I mean, we got three seconds left. Look at Tony Elliott. He's getting his guys to the sideline. Leading 14-7. Strange turn of events, James, late here in the second quarter. It was the first half that flew by. Hey, Excuse what's us. going on back yeah. there? <laughs> That's just fun. It was, it was a fast first quarter, or first half, but then this, this, these last few seconds have taken about 20 minutes, it seems. But they've got it back out on the field right now. And long way to go. So defensively, you've just got to be careful. Knock this football down. Don't try to get fancy and get up and intercept it. Keep them in front of you. And what will be a probably the last play of the half, a Hail Mary attempt. We think it'll be the last play. Let's see, Bates. Three seconds to go in the quarter. 
four receivers to choose from for Musket. Steps up in the pocket. Let's it go. Okay. To the end zone. Jump ball. Oh. And Virginia going up for it. And the officials are talking. It's a touchdown, Virginia. On the last play of the quarter, Malachi Leon Fields goes up and gets it. On the last play of the second quarter, throwing it into the end zone, Malachi Fields out leaps them all. The ruling on the field is a touchdown. That play is under further review. How about the musket man? I mean, he doesn't hail Mary this throwing it straight up in the air, made the best man win 500 like you're on the playground in elementary school. He throws a rope. And Malachi Fields has to fly to get down there. It was everybody playing center field, backing up to the back of that end zone for Boston College. And then, just like I was saying, high pointing that football. Well, at six foot four, 220, the big man is going to go way up and pull it down. This is going to stand. I don't see how in the world they would overturn it, especially after seeing that. The, the ball never has a chance to go down and hit the turf. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. And just like that times two. We had a just like that for Jeff Halfley in Boston College, just grasping that momentum away from Virginia, it seemed, but coming right back at him. And Tony Elliott, he was fiery trying to get his guys, hey, we've got one more snap, let's make it count. And they certainly did, trying to go up 21-7. to seven. Betridge the extra point. Officially the play goes 39 yards on the last play of the quarter. And Malachi Fields goes up and gets it. And Virginia at the end of the second quarter goes 80 yards for a touchdown to take a 21-7 lead to the locker room. Fields with five catches, 88 yards. Washington had six catches, 89 yards. They both had a touchdown catch. Mike Hollins had the other can play to Malachi Fields. 39 yards on the heave to the end zone by Musket. Three TD passes in the first half. Ganyard, the 34-year-old college football player, short kick. O'Keefe was a deep man for BC. I mean, are the officials talking about a fair catch attempt? They've got it marked short of the 15, James. Jeff Heiser is our referee. Well, Thomas Castellanos and this offense, the one thing you can take out of that first half is even though defensively they gave up that Hail Mary at the very end of the half, it's an offense that finally got something going, capped off with that short Garwell run. But in the middle of the field, a little bit of rhythm, a little bit of success for TC and this offense. He was the leading rusher in the first half for Boston College. Right side and Garwell, penalty marker. Castellanos ran for 31 yards. Threw the ball for 79 yards in the first half. Holding offense, number 71, 10 yard penalty, first down. Correction, half the distance to the goal line. So Boston College, which we talked about close calls, they lost here in the Red Bandana game, honoring Wells Crowther, hero of 9-11, by two points to the number five team in the nation right now in Florida State. What an emotional game that was. And the outcome may have been different, if not for 18 penalties against the Eagles in that game against the Seminoles. Well, only one penalty in the first half, but one quickly in the second. Flag is out. Castellanos was looking for Griffin. James Jackson may have been early with the contact. Pass interference. Defense, number seven. Ball be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. So they'll start it with one for you, one for me. It's going to be on Jackson here, and he just he just grabs him coming out of that break, and 
An easy call to slow his momentum. Yes, yeah, it was it was one only one penalty for BC in the first half, but seven on the other side for Virginia. There's a hole on the right side for Garwo. A pass at 25 yard line. Sanker forced him out. First down, Boston College and Pat Garwo. Well, Jeff Halfley felt like he could run the football. His offense could run the football in this game. Not a whole lot of success in the first half, but coming out here trying to pound it right now. He said in that Louisville game, we just, we didn't have, we needed someone to step up and make a play. Everybody it looked like it felt like was waiting on someone else to make a play. And, and so we asked him, who, who will that be? Who will electrify this offense? He said, well, the offensive line, they're the leaders, so we're gonna do it running the football. He's trying to take that to the defense here to start this second half on the ground so far. Garwo again, pinballing his way to the 40 yard line. Sanker brought him down, first down Boston College. Garwo with a punishing 11 yard run. And quickly over the ball. It's tough on a defense for an offense that huddles all the time to change it up like this. Give it back to Garwo. The graduate student from Levittown, Pennsylvania, 5'8", 210. Ran into Jarmir Carter. Helping his, helping his teammates, uh, helping the big guys up. <laughs> Giving them a breather. He's, Garwo gets a breather right yeah, here. Yeah, well deserved, I might add. You know, it, it, needless to say, you find a little bit of rhythm and success with the ground game. It helps number one immensely in the play pass category. Good job defensively here to clog it up. So that'll bring up third and seven for Boston College. Three of seven on third down in the game. There is a BC Eagle down. So Jude Bowery is down for BC. He'll be attended to by the training staff and we'll come back to Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. That was the statue of Doug Flutie, a famous Hail Mary against Miami back in 1984. Well, Virginia has one of its own. Malachi Fields, 39 yards. End of the second quarter in 2023 to make it 21-7. BC moving the football primarily on the ground. That's Castellanos. He's got a first down. Nice play call here for Boston College. Steve Shimko drawing it up. Garwo leading the way and blocking for his quarterback. And one extra blocker. And number one knows how to scoot through that gap. And it worked against FSU early in that game. Big third down conversion. Little razzle trickery around the edge. To the 25 yard line, O'Keefe. Little wrinkle from Shimko. Well, first down, come back at him with a reverse and great job blocking by Griffin. And O'Keefe's got to see his feet. He tripped over his own guy's feet. Joseph Griffin was on his defensive back forever, helping to clear a lane. But O'Keefe trying to cut a little bit too late and goes down to the turf. Otherwise, it may be knocking on the door. Garwo. Five white shirts converge on Garwo. Jackson and Bennett leading the way. Six yards on the play for Garwo. Running it over here on this right side. And interestingly enough, Trapillo, the big right tackle, I, I haven't seen him in there. And just moments ago, we saw Bowery leave the game. There's Mahogany, who's the guard in 67. Behind him for Boston College. Now playing that spot. Castellanos. That'll bounce in front of the receiver, Joseph Griffin. Sophomore from Springfield, Massachusetts, and incomplete. 67 is Jack Conley. Now in their right tackle, so 
After a lot of success on the ground, this one falls incomplete. And Don't forget next Saturday, James, back to Raleigh for Marshall at NC State. Boston College, four of eight on third down in this game. O'Keefe trying to string it out, and the Virginia defense comes up and makes the play. They had it read well, led by Cam Robinson, number five in white and orange and blue. And now fourth down for BC. You know, Dave Harrar was the first one to knife through there. It's, it's, it's fun to watch a defender read and react. And it, it's, it's one thing to read and react, but to have the athleticism to make something happen. And you had a few of them there on the defensive side of the ball for John Radzinski. Forces field goal track. In the neighborhood of 42 yards away for Liam Connor. And Connor hits it. Now four for four on the season. Chris Long, part of that inside the NFL crew, won a Super Bowl here with the Patriots as well. Washington on the return. Washington to the 30 and beyond. Nice to have Washington on your side on the return for Virginia. Took it 30 yards on the return, Malik Washington. And he'll try to get right back out there to play offense. And ACC receiver of the week coming off that loss to NC State, career high. 10 receptions, career high 170 yards of receiving and a career high two touchdowns back in Charlottesville last Friday night. Here he goes again. He's got the ball. Had TD catches of eight and three yards in the close loss to NC State. In fact, Virginia was able to convert a two-point conversion of 18 yards after a penalty. They got a subsequent penalty, pushed him back on the kickoff, and then North Carolina State was able to get in field goal position and win the game on the final play. Julian Gray was the return man and a pretty good one. Young guy for the Wolfpack to help after the penalty get him in position. Up the middle, past the 40. Julian Gray had a punt return TD in our game that we did a couple of weeks ago, James, against VMI for the Wolfpack. Yeah, very dangerous, a lot like Malik Washington. Of course, he caught those passes from Anthony Calandria. Tony Musket, the starter at the beginning of the year for Virginia. Back in the mix, and Musket threw three TD passes, his first three of the season in that first half. Third and short, Hollins is the back. They flip it to Washington. Boston College drops him at the 40. Amari Jackson knifing through in a loss of one. Fourth down, Cavaliers. Great job to penetrate. Look at De Palma in there as well. You've got De Palma and Jackson. Arnold. Wow, big stop to get back there and penetrate and to kill that play again. Careful, careful. A punt safe unit out here for BC right now. Bond, the return man. Ooh, that may have bounced off of him. Now, there was some congestion there. A flag is out. The ball bounced near the 20. It looked like he had signaled already, Bates, as he came up to make it. Well, I don't know that he signaled. Maybe he didn't. I just, I just know that you have to give him a chance to field the Kick ball. Kick catch interference. Kicking team number nine. 15-yard penalty. First down. He Time still out. made a late choice to try to get away from it, and it'll work out in BC's favor. They've got the ball. 7:41 to go, and the third will be on the pumpkin. 21-10 here in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Tom Wormy, James Bates, member of the '96 national championship team in Florida. Tabitha Turner is on the sidelines. We have our outstanding ACC football production crew with you from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Garwell, 50-yard line and more. Down the sideline for Broom, and he's out of bounds. So Alex Broom takes it down the sideline. He gets his chance and makes the most of it. 
Watch Mahogany, big 73, bring the wood and lead the way. And quick with the snap here, Castellanos. Fires it to the end zone. Looking for Griffin and a flag comes out after they got 33 yards on the run by Broom. King was back there defensively for Virginia. Defense, number nine, 15-yard penalty, first down. It was Cohen King on the last snap that Mahogany was picking on a little bit. Here he trips as he goes across that goal line and just trying to regain his balance, it seems, tries to, to grab on to Griffin, and that's where they'll throw the flag. It's unfortunate for Virginia because it really didn't seem like it had that much to do with Griffin not catching that football a little bit too strong, but the damage is done and a little bit of a spark for BC after coming out and putting three on the board on the opening drive here of the second half. How about 80 yards of penalties oh, against Virginia? Castellanos to get rid of it. His receiver is spun down. That's Bond. So Boston College has scored points on its last two possessions, the end of the second quarter when Garwo took it in from short yardage and the 42-yard field goal here in the third from Liam Connor. One for one in the red zone for the Eagles. Castellanos cuts back inside the five. They'll mark him at the four, and it's first and goal as Harard made the tackle of Castellanos. Going fast, and again, Mahogany from the right side. He'll pull, and the big body getting up there and setting the edge, this time all the way around on the left edge and showing you why he's one of the best there is. Christian Mahogany, the graduate student, out of Paramus, New Jersey, missed all of last season, and the captain helping to get it done here for BC. First and goal for the Eagles from the four. Castellanos tosses it into the end zone, and Boston College has a touchdown to Joseph Griffin from Castellanos. Boston College has scored on three straight possessions. Couple of TDs and a field goal. This one to Joseph Griffin in the end zone from Thomas Castellanos. Yeah, Tom, it wasn't a pretty first half for Castellanos throwing the football, but here he throws a beautiful ball right in the back of the end zone, just drops it in there for Griffin to run underneath it. He's already got space. It's a, a tough series for Cohen King. And that'll get him right back on track. Castellanos with the two interceptions there in the first half and a nice move by Griffin. Give him that quick stick inside. And that ball's just waiting for him there in the back of the paint. So Griffin has his first TD catch of the season, all smiles on that sideline. Castellanos now six TD passes through three of those in the game against Louisville on the road last Saturday. Unfortunately, that game got away from the Eagles early. They trailed 28 nothing. Coach Halfley told us his whole plan kind of went out the window because they fell in such a deep hole. Not the case today against Virginia, which scored at the very end of the first half, led 21-7 at halftime. Says a lot about the resiliency of this squad after that Hail Mary could have taken all the wind out of their sails. Signal for fair catch and made by Malik Washington. A nice guy, Bates. Yeah, you are an F boy. Until Tom. you put the helmet on and buckle up your stuff. <laughs> oh. By the way, check out the swarm as well, the ecological thriller. Yes. I've been watching that. Always a exciting finish to that show. That's on Tuesdays. I've been watching, Bates. I know. You've been fired up about it. Ezeraku leading the swarm for the Eagles on that play against Tony Musket. You know, and Tony Elliott's team, you mentioned earlier, the up 14 at Maryland. They got to make sure they don't give up all the momentum completely here on the road. Musket's pass is knocked to the turf. A flag is out. 
So Fields was the receiver and Jones the defender. He did get a piece of the ball, but too much of Fields as well, it appears. Two good football players going at it right here, one on one. Pass interference, defense number one. Ball be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. Right. Playing up tight, doesn't quite get the jam, and ah, I don't know. We got big Malachi Fields. Guy can hold his own, and that's a tough one right there. Jones had his eyes back on the ball, knocks it away. I think that's pretty good cornerback play right there, but they'll get the flag and a fresh set of downs for Virginia. Cavaliers, the 0-4 start for the first time since 82, trying to erase that today against BC. The flip to pace. There is a flag out. You can see it right at the feet of number 71 for Virginia. So Banks on the tackle, 13 in maroon. Holding offense, number 71. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still first down. You got Anana. He's called for the penalty, number 71. He was stepping on the flag, and unfortunately, it's against him. 71 and white. There you go, right side. You see him up top on that cornerback, just doing all he can to get a piece. It's tough on those big guys. Yeah, you're big and strong, but you got Elijah Jones at 6'2", 184, quick on the outside. So going backwards here with that flag, first and 16 now. Approaching the five-minute mark of the third quarter. Musket intercepted. Elijah Jones with the pick for the Eagles. Rolling out of the field is an interception by the defense. First down, Boston College. Musket looking for Fields. Jones gets in the passing lane. The experienced Jones making his 37th start here today. Again, man coverage coming right underneath. Just right in that hip pocket. And he's got his defensive coordinator, Azar Abdul Rahim, giving him a big hip bump. Fired up on the sidelines after that big turnover. And let's see if. Castellanos in this offense can make something of that big interception. The first interception of the season for the Eagles. Elijah Jones comes up with it in that BC secondary, and BC has produced points on each of its last three possessions. Most recently, Four-yard touchdown catch from Joseph, Joseph Griffin from Castellanos. Castellanos sensing the pressure. Runs out of the pocket and speeds up to the 45. They'll mark him at the 46. And a first down for Boston College as he got seven on the scamper. There is a BC player down. It's the center, Drew Kendall. Number 66 for the Eagles. So they will attend to Kendall. The ball is out past the 45, spotted at the 46 yard line. Yeah, I was I was watching him after the play and he was he was up and then he just I don't know if he cramped up or something didn't quite feel right. And, went and took a, a seat down. Uh, Tabitha, let's get it down to you. Yeah, guys, just a couple injury updates from Boston College personnel. Right tackle, Trapilo, his leg. He's out for the remainder of the game. Another right tackle, Bowery, his leg as well. Out for the remainder of this game, guys. Wow, thank you, Tabitha. And you, you know, this is something that's been, last year especially, so many injuries along that offensive line. They got Coach Matt Applebaum back, who was here in 20 and 21 was with the Miami Dolphins as an offensive line coach last year. And he's back and he's finally got some healthy bodies. But according to Tabitha, right now they're hurting a little bit, getting a little bit thin. Still got their big captain in there at right guard, Christian Mahogany, running the show. Castellanos. 
On the Virginia side of the 50, near the 48. Appeared to be a design run for Castellanos. James Jackson on the tackle. Six yards on the run for Castellanos. The victory this season for Boston College that came against Holy Cross here at Alumni Stadium on September 9th. Holy Cross just west in Worcester, Massachusetts out of the football championship subdivision and an overtime loss to start the season against Northern Illinois 27-24 for BC. Castellanos unloads. Exceeds the reach of Lewis Bond. Yeah, had to be careful with that one. Had had a guy underneath, had to get it up over him a little bit too strong and, and too far. Good to see Drew Kendall back out there blocking on that play. The center who left the game, the snap before. But incomplete. Here's your third down. And again, defensively, this is a coach. This is a team. That, remember, they converted four fourth down tries against Florida State. So four down territory. They'd like to get it here, though. Move the chains. Four of nine on third down. Castellanos lunging for the line to gain. He's a couple yards short. Needed to get to that 44-yard line of Virginia. Ahern on the tackle. And they will go, it looks like, right here. Ahern has had a pretty good football game. Had the interception earlier. Handful of big tackles. Let's we'll see if he's got one more. It's a fourth down and two. You mentioned earlier, Tom, nobody in the nation has gone for it more on fourth down than that man right here. They need two and maybe a little bit more. They've got it up inside the 40. Castellanos gets the job done. Seven yards on the run. Baumui, the tackle, but not before a first down. And now the player is down for Virginia. It is Baumui. Shimko dials up the same play as the last play. Get those linebackers flying out of there thinking it's another jet sweep. The big bodies up front doing their job of clearing the way. And Castellanos, when, when he's feeling it and puts that foot in the ground, he's got such great burst. And you hate to see this. This is Aaron Falmui down on his back. Such a great leader. Sixth year player for Virginia from Kapoli, Hawaii. So while they attend to foul Mui. I like that. Those basketball schools like looking that. pretty good. Those are fun hey, you know it. what? Miami's also 4-0, and they, yeah. in the last two years, the Elite Eight and the Final Four for Jim Laranaga and the Miami Hurricanes. So just saying. Okay, but I, I think uh, no championships. You get, you got to. Hey, what about the Gators? Oh wait, they lost to that. Dang it. They won a couple championships. <laughs> Only championships. Nah, okay. No, well, they have a couple in basketball in the past, but you got to be playing better football to be on that list. That's yeah. that's that's the number one. That's the number one box you got to check off. And man, it's it's fun to see some of these teams playing such great ball. Be fun to watch Duke and Notre Dame tonight. Diata has come in for Falmui. This is Garwo left side. Just could not get away from the grasp of Jonas Sanker. Or else there was a lot of fake grass ahead of him. Just two yards. Sanker. How about Jonas Sanker? From right there in Charlottesville, the Covenant School played eight-man football in high school. You know, hey, make tackles. It, you, you, it'd be one-on-one, -on -one, three on three, four on four, eight on eight. If you make tackles, you make tackles. He's from right there in Charlottesville, as is Malachi Fields on the offensive side. Final minute and change of the third quarter from Alumni Stadium out on the edge. Bond, Bond, inside the 10, and he'll take it to the house for Boston College. Three yards, Castellanos to Bond. And the Eagles have their first lead of the afternoon in Chestnut Hill. Halfley telling us that he's got a resilient bunch. They've been down 
in so many games they fought back down 31 to 10 at halftime against FSU came storming back and here they come out of the halftime locker room and have owned this second half and thanks to big plays like this Malcolm Green defensively at that corner spot he can't jump inside like that he cannot especially with a guy like Bond out there so dangerous you've got to force him back inside because there's nobody to help on the outside and there's no helping the who defense when Bond goes running free straight down the sidelines 33 yards later. The Eagles with their first lead of the football game with 104 remaining in the third quarter. Third receiving touchdown of the season for Lewis Bond. He leads the team in that category. And Castellanos now his seventh TD toss of the year. Two in the third quarter. Four yard pass for a touchdown to Joe Griffin. And the 33-yarder to Bond, who did the rest and took it to the end zone for Boston College. 24-21 BC. Washington wants the fair catch. 104 to go in the third quarter. Starting the week, James, when we talked to these two coaching staffs, you sensed a hunger about getting a victory. For Virginia, it's first. For Boston College, it's first in conference play, and they have come to play this afternoon here in Chestnut Hill. Well, in, in two teams that, you know, you, you go wire to wire with FSU, if you're BC, NC State, Virginia, they know that they can, they can play some good football. They just got to put it all together. Let's see if Virginia can get the momentum once again here. Because, man, has it been taken away. There were, there were moments there in that first half when Tony Musket and this offense, he just looked unstoppable. Just everything was just rolling into a great rhythm. And on that opening drive in the second half, that certainly wasn't, wasn't the case. Washington now nine catches for 97 yards after BC took it 65 yards for the score. There's a sack. Infiltrating that backfield, George Rooks, and the sack for Boston College. George Rooks just keeps on coming. Look at the motor right there, running right through the block and had a great big first half, and he just keeps coming here in the second half. And, oh, yeah, by the way, it, it's the defense that has a little bit to do with taking a quarterback and taking an offense completely out of their flow. This is the end of the third quarter. Taking its first lead of the game after its most recent TD. And now Musket. This is third and 12 for Musket, and he's down. They unload on Musket for the fifth sack of the game for the Eagles. And coming right out of that interview by Tabitha, what did Jeff Halfley say? We got to keep putting the pressure on them. They bring six, and they get home. Sack number five. It's Banks this time, and look at the reaction. Look at him. Eagles flying high right now defensively as we enter the fourth. Sparks punts it away. Bond ranging to his right. Back behind the 30. Bond got away from the first man, not the second. And he gets crumpled at the 30-yard line. Some emotion on the sideline from Chris Banks. It's been a comeback by Boston College after a late TD in the second quarter. In fact, on the last play of the second quarter by Virginia to take the 21-7 lead to the locker room. It's been all BC. James, in the third quarter, 176 yards of offense for the Eagles against 19 for Virginia in that third. And look at the energy over on that Boston College satellite. I mean, it, Chris Banks going to need to take an ice bath from all the pats on the back. The transfer from te uh, Temple. Ooh, uh oh. Incomplete pass and a heavy hit at the end of that play. That's Ryan O'Keefe. Yeah, Malcolm Green is also down. They collided. It's an incomplete pass. And so they're going to attempt. Of how precious. You know, 
these these young lives really are you know football aside just you know just can't help but but think of it false start offense number 60 five yard penalty second down the year that it's been for the guys over on the other sidelines and you know losing their their brothers Lavelle Davis and Devin Chandler and Deshaun Perry they're reminded with Mike Hollins fighting back and being out there but wow let's let's hope that both of those young men are okay prayers to them and their families Castellanos threads it in and complete the Takis. James, I don't know what the Eagles said at halftime, but it's working. Their last four possessions prior to this one, 24 points and 240 yards. And that one went for 24. This is over the middle. It's a shorter gain to Garwo. And James, maybe you can speak to the players just, just trying to collect their thoughts and get back into game mode here as uh, their teammates are taken to the locker room. Yeah, I, I mean, I just, I don't know that I was ever on the field on, on my team or, or the opponent's team when something so scary went down like that, so I can't really speak 100% to it, but to have to flip that switch and go back out there and just fight and compete and scrap, it just, wow, it, it would be tough after watching All start, offense, not all players became set. And just to reiterate, Malcolm Green walked to the locker room on his own strength, assisted by some of the medical and training staff. And Ryan O'Keefe, yes, he was on the stretcher being carted off, but he did give the thumbs up on the way out. So there was some movement from the upper extremities for O'Keefe. So if you're looking for the best possible sign, yep. that was probably it. And they'll be further evaluated. Garwo left side. Ball pops out. That ball's on the turf. The initial indication is that Virginia has it. I think Josh Ahern is going to force this fumble. Harrar comes up with it. Fumble. Recovered by the defense. First down, Virginia. Ahern had him wrapped up. Second player in is going to knock it away. That's Langston Long putting his hat right on the ball and popping out. And Dave Harrard, the fourth year student athlete out of Fort Lauderdale, Stranahan High School down in the 954, putting the ball back in the hands of the Hoos, trailing by three. Third turnover for the Eagles. Musket goes up the middle to midfield, and we go down to Tabitha. Yeah, guys, just give you an update. You can see the ambulance behind me. They've loaded Ryan O'Keefe into the ambulance. They're going to take him to a local hospital, evaluate him, see what's going on. But he's in the ambulance. They just pulled out on his way to a local hospital. Guys. Thank you, Tabitha. It certainly was good, as you mentioned, Tom, to see him moving those hands, the extremities, as he was parted off because for a while there wasn't a whole lot going on. So that's good to see and our thoughts are with that young man as he heads to the hospital. He graduate student transferred from UCF, Round Rock High School in Austin, Texas, Ryan O'Keefe. And his buddy's back here on defense trying to stop a UVA first down attempt here on third and short. Just two of eight on third down of the game for Virginia. Musket was tripped up at the end of the play. He needed to get to the 43-yard line. I think he did. He, he did. did. Ball, yeah, those ball, chains ball are moving. Out. Ball yep. came out, but it was the ground that caused it, so it's first down. Virginia with tempo. Second and third effort from Hollins, and he goes nowhere. Several Eagles combining on the stop led by Cam Horsley, 96 in Maroon, and a loss of one. And that's Hollins favoring the ankle. What a comeback by that young man involved in that unspeakable tragedy with his three teammates who lost their lives. 
And Holland's fighting all the way back to put the uniform back on for this season. Courageous. It's on track to earn his master's in higher education in December, Collins is. Musket still has it. He doesn't think a whole lot about sliding, does he, Bates? <laughs> no. You know, we're used to seeing the last couple of weeks, we've seen some guys that are a little bit lit smaller. Griffiths at Wake Forest. You know, even King at Georgia Tech. He's a little bit taller, but not very big. Same thing goes with Castellano. So when you're 6'2", 6'3", about 2'10", you can bang around a little bit. Here's a third down and four. Musket got the last one with a run. Trying to do it again on this drive. Third and four. Looking to his right all the way, directing some traffic. A leaping Malik Washington cannot come up with it. John Pupil defending. So fourth down for Virginia. Daniel Sparks is on the field for head coach Tony Elliott and the punting unit. A tale of two halves for that starting quarterback right there, Tony Musket. Good job defending by Pupil. Transfer from Dartmouth. Bond is at his 10 yard line. Into the end zone. 9.53 to go in the fourth. Boston College has come back to take the lead in the second half. 24 21 from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Next Saturday, AC third quarter. It's Garwell up to the 23 yard line. Just three for Garwell. Fourth quarter has not been kind of Virginia this season. They've been outscored 50 to 11 by the opposition. And struggled in the third to gain any traction. Did not score after leading 21-7 at halftime. Nice job here by Cohen King. Physical cornerback for Virginia. Fighting to get outside and turn that ball back inside. Oh, Culpepper, Virginia. That's, that's where all your buddies are with those white hats. They're not out on the sidelines, so you got to find a way to turn that ball carrier back in. He does just that to force a third down and five. Five of 11 on third down. Castellanos surveys the landscape, delivers it to the 40-yard line. That ball came out at the end of the play. Griffin made the catch. The ball came out at the end of the play. King knocked it free. Ruling on the field is a recover. Fumble recovered by the defense. First down, Virginia. So it is a turnover. Another fumble from Boston College. Halfley mentioned to Tabitha just moments ago, we cut down on the turnovers and started getting the tempo going. And here, just really a ball that was on its way out as Griffin was trying to fight for a few more yards. And Cohen makes sure that it's out. So back to back fumbles for BC. Let's see if UVA can do something with it this time around. Four turnovers for the Eagles. Short yardage for Kobe Pace. We've got a long way to go to decide this one. Well, we really do. But again, hats off to a Boston College defense that could not find an answer to Tony Musket in this offense early in the football game. And there you go, perfect, right on time. Look at that graphic, the two touchdowns and, and some outstanding runs by both Musket and Kobe Pace, Mike Hollins in the first half. So the middle and complete second wood, number 44 in white, first down Virginia. 10 yards on the play. They credited Jonas Sanker with the cover for Virginia on that last play. This down to the end zone, and it's too far. 
Intended receiver Malachi Field, Elijah Jones, who has an interception in this game in the third quarter, was back there defensively. Two good ones battling it out there once again. We've seen quite a bit of it this afternoon. And Jones, stride for stride, making sure to take a peek back at that ball, but not until that receiver lets him know, and so those eyes get big, the hands go up, snap that head around, falls off the mark, falls to the ground, and it's second down and 10. Musket's gonna have plenty of time. Trying to make a decision. Finally got rid of it. Well out of bounds. He was feeling the heat, even though he had plenty of time to throw it. Credit that to the BC secondary, James. Right, first time in a while he hasn't been on the run. Once that ball reaches his hands, good job by the offensive line. The pressure coming late, but an even better job by the secondary. No grounding there. He, yes, he wasn't out of the pocket, but there was a receiver right there in the vicinity. So incomplete and a third and ten now. And just one for their last five on third down for Virginia. From just beyond the BC 25-yard line. Musket trying to take off. Almost tripped up. Fighting his way down to the 18. He needed about the 16 for the first down. Eight yards on the run by Musket. Brings up fourth and short. Gutsy run there. You get up near the sticks. You mentioned it earlier. He doesn't like sliding very much. But he won't quite make it to that first down marker. So trying to tie it up now. 35-yard attempt for Will Betridge. Four or five on the season. Made two field goals in the loss to NC State last Friday of 21 and 36 yards. Replay has reviewed the play. The runner's knee was down at the 27-yard line. Fourth down. Ooh. It's not a 35-yard field goal anymore. There's a good look at it. And and every play is, is reviewed in college football, and they catch one right there and help Please out BC. Please reset the game clock to 7 minutes, 25 seconds. The clock will start on my signal. Thank you. Musket needs to be careful with that football out in the middle of the field like that. I know you're, you're fighting for those extra yards, but can't afford any turnovers. So here we go. So now it's a 44-yarder, which would be a season long for Betridge. Career long of 47 to tie this game. Will Betridge, he has done it for Virginia. 44 yards away and money for Betridge. Oh, you betcha. Well, I'll take it back to the spot where the knee went down. It doesn't matter, we're tied at 20. Four all with 7-10 to go in the fourth quarter. Will Betridge just connected on a 44-yarder season long. For Betridge, who is now five of six on the season on field goal attempts, and he's tied us up at 24. Bond, the deep man. Ganyard kicks it away. No return from Bond. ACC football on the CW returns next Saturday as the thundering herd of Marshall charge into Raleigh to face a hungry Wolfpack team ready to defend their home turf. Marshall, NC State. Next Saturday, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, only on the CW. Second time this season we've seen NC State on the CW with their victory earlier this year against Virginia Military Institute. Loss on Friday against Louisville, which remains undefeated for NC State. They'll match up with Marshall next week on the CW. Right side in a hole, Garwell. Close to the marker. Nine yards for Garwo. Well, that'll work. Just hold on to that football. Boston College has had a lot of success on the ground in the second half, but the two turnovers crush it. Garwo gets the first down, adds to his total. How about 17 carries for Garwo and up over 70 yards rushing, and that includes the two-yard TD run 
in the second quarter. Correction pass from Castellanos. Darwell from Levittown, Pennsylvania. Conwell Egan High School, same high school as Steve Slayton. Former West Virginia great NFL player. Castellanos open man bun. 45 yard line for BC. Plenty for the first down. Sanker made the tackle. Well, credit the throw, credit the catch, but also credit Garwo. There you see the play action fake. You know, those linebackers, they have to respect the run. So they step up, and then you've got windows, and you've got a guy scooting behind them like Bond. And that makes things easy on this offense. One thing works, and everything starts to work. 21 yards on the previous pass play. Second and third effort, Garwo, who did have a two-yard TD run in the second quarter. He totes this one for eight yards. Doing the work. Garwo this afternoon. Garwo's run it 18 times. Castellano 15 times. And what did Halfley tell us yesterday? I need somebody to lead to go out there and make plays, inspire this team. And, and he said the offensive line is who I'd like to see do it. That'll be a short loss on the play. Falmui with the stop on Garwo. It's good to see Aaron Falmui back out on the field. He left earlier with some sort of injury. Big player there on the defensive front for John Radzinski, the defensive coordinator. Able to knife back there and stop the bleeding a little bit. They've had all kinds of success on the ground, but here's your third and four now. Even with that loss, Boston College up over 200 yards rushing as a team. And now third down. Castellano spinning his way. The mark is at the 33-yard line after a three-yard gain. Might be a yard short, James. Very close for Castellanos. I don't think there's much question here. No, well, you've got you've got a Boston College offense that goes for it on fourth down, and, and they've had a lot of success. Four fourth down conversions against Florida State a couple weeks ago. Interesting, as they changed personnel, they changed two offensive linemen with that. They need a yard. First charge timeout, Boston College. 30 seconds. What a game this afternoon between Boston College and Virginia seeking its first ever win here in Chestnut Hill. Just the eighth all-time meeting between the teams. A dandy to this point. Tied at 24 and late in the ball game. 3.47 to go. And the second half, James, Tony Elliott does not want to look at those numbers. Well, one thing that got to be happy with his defense is forced two fumbles two turnovers see if they can get a stop on fourth down to turn it over here one for two on fourth down to the game for BC up the middle with Garwo wow. only needed a yard or so it's close yeah that marker is at about the 32 yard line those sticks are stationary for the moment First and ten line. It's not official. It certainly looks like it's first down from that shot, but they'll have to make it official by bringing out the chain gang. Wow. Big measurement here. Dramatic moment for both teams. It is enough for BC. Three quarters of the football. Beyond that line to gain for Garwo. Oh, man. Dom down there in the truck providing painting that that first and ten line. He was spot on, wasn't he? We should have just trusted him. First down. What a big one. So now it, it, an offense that's used to huddling, taking their time, 
want to make sure they let this clock milk down a little bit each time they before they snap the ball, not give Virginia a ton of time to work with. Perard on the tackle of Garwal. There is a player down for Virginia momentarily. Dave Harrard is the player down for Virginia. Good to see him pop up and run to the Virginia sideline. So it is second and eight for BC with that ball right near the Virginia 30 yard line. So we're watching BC work the ground a little bit James and also work this clock late in the game and the strategy for the Eagles here well go ahead and, and work it down all you can there's there's not a lot of field left right here Virginia still with their three timeouts so plenty of time right now but Boston College content with letting it tick all the way down you know, and again, this this is what's nice about teams that change it up a little bit, huddle up a little bit. Sometimes they go tempo. They, they, they're not all out of sorts when it comes to this. They run it again up the middle. Just a couple of yards. BC has two timeouts. First charge timeout. Virginia. And Virginia just took its first. seconds in length. Please reset Leave. the game clock. The two minutes, 23 seconds. Thank you. You saw Liam Connor loosening on the sidelines. He's already made a 42 yarder. Right in the third quarter for Connor, took over the kicking duties this season. Coming into the day, he was three for three. Virginia trying to go on the road in the ACC. It's their first road game since last season, James, October 20th, when they went to Georgia Tech and won 16 to 9. One of their three victories a season ago. And their lone conference win. Trying to snap a seven game losing streak against Boston College with the ball tied at 24. There's number 24. Fighting for every last inch for BC just inside the 25 with a four yard gain. Carter second charge time on the stop. Virginia 30 seconds. Tony Elliott out there quickly. Call that timeout. So 216 is where we'll sit. And this is this is a position right here. You know, for a, a guy that, that likes to go for it on fourth down so much, he went for that on fourth and one and converted. But here you send out that field goal unit. Take those three points and hang on tight. Because you've got a guy in Tony Musket for Virginia that made some big plays in this game. But here as of late, they've been few and far between. Thanks in large part to the Boston College defense. First things first. Here comes your field goal attempt from 42 yards out. He's already made one from right there at that distance. Liam Connor to give BC the late advantage. Wait, wait, wait. 42 yards away and hooking. And good from Liam Connor. Eagles in front 27, 24, 211 to go. Good snap, good hold, and right down the middle, two 42 yarders. <laughs> Sam Condotti, the 
the punter and they're celebrating. Look at the reaction of the fans. There are the <laughs> students. You've got a bunch of moms and dads in here on Parents Weekend at Boston College. This beautiful campus, both of these campuses, or the grounds rather, back in Charlotte. Absolutely, Bates. Get that right. 11 plays, 51 yards, and the 42 yarder, second of the game from Liam Connor, who, by the way, has not missed a field goal this season for BC. Now, five for five. For Liam Connor, the sophomore from Lemonster, Massachusetts, giving BC the lead. Coming up to meet it at the 15. Washington. One timeout and 2.05 on the clock for Virginia, trailing 27 24. Only points in the second half, James, for Virginia. The 44 yarder from Will Betridge. There you see the numbers for Tony Musket. For all those TD passes, though, James, in the first half. Yep. Of including, 5, 18, and 39 yards. And including that 39 yarder, the Hail Mary, as time expired in the first half. Time is expiring here in the fourth quarter now, and the game's on the line. Musket. Incomplete on first down. Jaden Gibson could not haul it in. It's almost a tweener ball. Gibson, not sure if he wanted to get airborne for it. He ends up jumping for the football and ball comes firing in there. And while awkward, he's got to hold on to that one. Second down and 10. Musket tries the other side. That's behind the receiver. Fields. Jones defending and it's a clean play. Third and 10, Virginia. Let's take a look at it. Again, here's this matchup. It's been so much fun to watch. Jones got away with a little bit of a hold on the jersey right there. Back shoulder, and Tony Elliott's letting him know that he saw it. No flag. Third down and 10. They're making some noise. At the 35-yard line, that's short of the marker. Catch made by Gibson. He got seven yards. So fourth and about three. Trying to get to the 38. Fourth and three. Saying, let's go, let's go. Here's the ball game. From the 35 for Virginia. Trying to keep hope alive. Musket's pass is incomplete. There was pressure in the pocket. Ball to Boston College on downs. And the pressure once again getting to Musket. Once they decided to heat things up and bring pressure, it's been a long afternoon for Tony Musket. Never seemed to get comfortable after that first half there in the pocket. And a great job, great job coaching by Halfley, by Abdul Rahim, the defensive coordinator, the halftime locker room, the adjustments that were made, what we need to do to win this football game. Well, defensively, it was pressure that quarterback, and pressure they did. So BC maybe just a couple of snaps away. And Third and final timeout. If you're Virginia. just joining us, there was a scary moment earlier on in the game. Collision between Ryan O'Keefe for BC and Malcolm Green for Virginia. Green was taken to the locker room. O'Keefe taken to a nearby hospital for further evaluation on an awkward collision between the two. And so the Eagles with the thoughts of Ryan O'Keefe trying to cement this victory. It's another tough fight coming out of the short end for Tony Elliott's team, James. Only able to muster three points in the second half, Boston College. Trail 21-7 at halftime. And a heartbreaker they lost at home a week ago on a Friday night to NC State. It's tough. Wild home games this season for BC, an OT loss, a three-point win. 
a two point loss to Florida State and today it appears that Jeff Halfley and the Eagles are on their way toward victory against visiting Virginia consider the BC had lost seven of its last eight ACC games and four in a row at home against ACC opponents hadn't beaten an ACC team at home since 2022 October 1st against Louisville 34 33. Well, they've got a tough one next week as they go on the road at Army. It's funny. You, you look at the schedule. you got Army. Next up, Georgia Tech. That used to be a nice one, too, because you, you prepare for the option one week and then the second week, but things have changed. Second charge timeout. Boston but, College. 30 seconds. I think things have changed there in Atlanta, of course, a few years ago. Paul Johnson no longer the head coach, so... It's not your grandpa's Georgia Tech as Haynes King is running the show, the transfer from Texas A&M. Thomas Castellanos throwing and running for his head coach, Jeff Halfley. Castellanos, 183 yards passing, 78 yards on the ground. Garwo led the way, 87 yards rushing on 23 carries for Garwo. And that should be the final snap. What an afternoon at Alumni Stadium. The come from behind victory by Boston College. And it's sophomore quarterback Thomas Castellanos. Uh, we had a little bit of everything. And all smiles here. And, and unfortunately, we had a little bit of a scare too. So we're praying for you, Ryan O'Keefe and family and all your Boston College Eagle family and teammates. Nice win on the football field, though, for Jeff Halfley and these BC Eagles. And both of these head coaches, just outstanding leaders to these young men and, and outstanding football coaches, and really enjoyed meeting with them throughout the week.